I'm sharing with you some tips for beautiful detail painting that will improve the models on your model railroad layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. There are lots of different kinds of model railroaders with lots of different interests and priorities in how they pursue the hobby. From those who are just into basic model railroading, who like the ready-to-run stuff and like to rail fan their layouts, to those who like operations, who maybe aren't interested in a lot of detail or even a lot of scenery on their layouts, just like to run them in a prototypical manner. To model builders who are really interested and into building and painting detailed and weathered model structures, locomotives, rolling stock. And these are just a few of the many, many kind of focuses and interests that we can have within this same hobby of model railroading. Well, today I want to talk to those of you who are those model builders that I just described, who are interested in really uh, high detail on your structures or locomotives and rolling stock, and you're trying to paint details uh, on those various models. Now, as an inscaler, one of the comments that I get more than anything else is from people who say that they have fat fingers or poor eyesight, which means that for N scale or even fine detail and HO scale, it really is, is a struggle for them. But I'm here today to tell you that it's not as hard as you think to produce some really great detail on your models. And specifically, we're talking today about hand painting or brush painting some of those details in a way that makes your models stand out, look really fantastic, and increase the realism of the models on your layout. So I'm gonna share with you some tips that I have learned and that I use that I think will really help you when it comes to that hand painting details on your models. So let's head on over to the workbench and we'll get started right now. Visit our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. Their new location with 5,500 square feet of inventory and next day shipping make them your premier model railroad destination. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. As with any job, the first key to quality detail painting is choosing the right tools. In this case, that means choosing the right brushes. Now, I have collected a lot of brushes over time, and I use them all for different things. But when it comes to good detail painting, you need to have brushes dedicated for that purpose. It's important to have brushes that are small enough for the details that you are painting, and to have the right shape to create the effect that you need. I suggest you go to an art supply store or a general craft store like Hobby Lobby or Michaels and spend some time looking at the different artists' brushes in the paint section. You'll probably be looking at the smallest brushes that they have to offer. Now, I use fairly inexpensive brushes for painting my layout base, scenery, and backdrops, but when it comes to detail painting, I spend a little more to get really good quality brushes. Let me show you my four primary go-to brushes for detail painting. They're all brushes that are suitable for oils or for acrylics. The first is an 18 aught round brush. This is the brush I use most often for detail painting, and it's the one you'll see me using a little later in this video. It's quite small, round, it comes to a nice point, and has bristles that are medium length and moderately flexible. Next is an 18 aught spotter brush. This brush has shorter, stiffer bristles and a very sharp point. I use this for painting in a very tight corners. This brush is an 18 aught liner. It has long, softer bristles, and the bristle head is thinner. It's ideal for painting fine lines. And finally, I have a 10 aught shader brush. This is a flat brush with a straight end and is ideal for painting slightly wider lines and larger details. It's also important to understand that brushes are consumable. They do not last forever, and these very small brushes are delicate and need to be replaced periodically. Over time, bristles get misshapen and splayed out from use, rendering the brushes useless for fine detail painting. Here are two examples that I have of detail brushes that I have retired from detail painting for this very reason. 
These brushes get a second life, however, as I use them to apply and scrub in weathering powders, and they work perfectly for that. Once we've chosen the right brushes, we need to choose the right paint as well. I use a variety of paints for different applications, but when it comes to hand detail painting, Vallejo Model Color is my go-to paint. It's designed for fine detail brush painting, so it is just the right viscosity and has a very finely ground pigment. It also flows very well and covers well, and these are the qualities that you really need in detail brush paint. Now as we get to the actual painting process, begin by applying only a very small amount of paint to your palette, just a drop or two. You'll use very little paint on these details, and the paint on your palette will begin to dry and skin over more quickly than you might think. Once it does, it becomes useless as it will begin to glob on your brush and on your model. When painting your model, whenever possible, use the guiding lines on the model to guide your painting. In this case, I'm painting window sashes on this structure kit. I'm applying paint to the surface of the sash with a brush, allowing the corner between the sash and the outer wall to be my guide. Patience is key here. This is not a race, and your goal is not speed, but rather to have a great looking model when you're finished. So slow down and take your time. A steady hand is important here. Find the most comfortable position for every stroke. Turn the model as you need to get the best possible position. Steady your hand on the model, on your work surface, or with your other hand, whatever it takes to get as solid and as steady as you possibly can. Very few people can paint fine detail with a free hand without using something to steady or rest their hand on. The most common issue most people express about fine detail modeling or working in smaller scales is their ability to see. This issue must be addressed to get quality detail painting. Good lighting is crucial, and lighting that is similar to your layout lighting will produce the best looking results, as what you see on the workbench will be exactly what you see on the layout. If vision is an issue, use some sort of magnification like reading glasses or an optivisor. As you're painting, it's important to clean your brush regularly. As I mentioned before, small amounts of paint will dry quickly. The tiny amounts of paint on these very small brushes will begin to dry very quickly, and when it does, it will cause globs on your brush that will hamper your ability to produce fine detail. I keep a cup of water on my workbench at all times for cleaning brushes, and I clean my detail brush every couple minutes to avoid this issue. I simply dip the brush in the water and brush it out on a paper towel a few times to remove drying paint from the bristles. Be sure when you do this to brush out all of the water from the bristles on the paper towel after you clean it and watch for that inevitable drop of water on the ferrule. Dry it off as well. While painting, load paint primarily on the tip of your brush. Too much paint on your brush can easily end up in places on your model that you don't want it. Remember, this is precision painting, so load the paint on your brush in a precise manner. Plan to get one or two strokes from each load of paint on your brush, and then reload the tip. Don't overload the brush just to try to save time. If you find the surface hard to cover with the paint, apply multiple coats. Too many times modelers ruin the detail effect of their models by trying to apply too much paint in one coat. Apply a thin, natural coat, let it dry, and then apply a second coat if needed. Accept the fact that mistakes will be made. You will at times get spots of paint where you don't want them. There's no shame in having to touch up. I nearly always have places that I need to touch up after detail painting. It's all just part of the process. Finally, after my paint is applied and dry, I inspect it carefully. When brush painting, there will nearly always be some spots where the paint is a bit thicker than you want or where the pigment leaves a bit of a rough looking texture. I can usually fix these spots with a super fine grit sanding stick. Just touch the spot lightly a few times with a sanding stick. Not enough to remove the paint, but just enough to smooth and touch up the surface.
Well, there are some tips that I hope will be helpful to you as you work to do detail painting on the models on your layout. If you've been frustrated with detail painting, some of these tips that I've shared with you today may really help you out. And I hope you'll give them a shot because I think you'll find that that detail painting is something that you'll improve in very quickly and also something you'll find very satisfying as it improves the quality of your models. Well, if you enjoyed this video on detail painting, I've got some videos on weathering rolling stock using paint that I know you'll enjoy as well, and you'll find a link to those in the corner of your screen right now. Be sure to check out the description down below the video before you go. There you're going to find a link to my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week, as well as my Micromark promo code that'll save you 10% on regularly priced items at micromark.com and tons of other great links that I know that you will enjoy. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. 10, Lizzie?